welcome to Hometown Happenings. I'm Carol McCarthy here with Carolyn Zern. Uh, she's a local farmer who comes from a local farm family and she's just spent some time in Washington, D.C. and uh, is probably going to go back <laughs> again and again. Um, but uh, I asked her to come in today to talk about her work uh, with the farm team and tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on in Washington, about uh, you're looking at a way to feed the future. We are. Well, okay. So Feed the Future actually is a piece of legislation that came into being uh, in 2010 mm -hmm. under uh, uh, George Bush mm -hmm. the second. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but anyway, uh, now it went all through the Obama administration as well. And it really is, we want more out of it. So we, we were seeking to have the Global Food Security Act in play right now, but it had to go through the House and the Senate. And actually is what the Global Food Security Act would do would be to help with administer programs that are already out there that NGOs um, work with. And the Farmers Feed the World program is actually um, funded by the Farm Journal Foundation. Okay. And we get a lot of grants from Bill Gates as well, okay. the Gates Foundation. And of course, that's all about feeding people in, in uh, third world countries, developing countries, and that type of thing. And we uh, feel very strongly about that. So the farm team was developed, and there's a farm lead in every state that participates. I want to say there's 16 or 20 right now. And we each have um, promoters under us. We have our, our uh, people that we work with, and so I chose the Minnesota Agriwoman. Okay. And that's kind of how that all works into that. <laughs> so as the farm lead, uh, we talk about world hunger, and one out of eight people in, in the world are seriously in trouble with hunger um, issues. And because of that, there's a lot of problem. You know, when you're, when, when you're not getting the nutrition you need, your mental as well as your, you know, physical health is very disrupted and that causes unrest, it causes bad um, play for the kids that are, that are growing up in those third world countries. And so um, we wanted something, our passionate group of farmers, uh, to make sure that they would get programs over there that would help them sustain their own future. Right now farmers feed about, in the United States, feed about 155 people. With, by 2050, we're going to be two million more people and less land to sustain all of these people on. So educating people in other countries to grow their own foods, um, and they have trouble. First of all, it's a lot of women, and that's the other issue. Mm -hmm. So mostly in those countries, they're the women and children that do the agriculture. Um, I'm not sure what the men do. No. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> But anyway, um, so we need to help them develop the programs to, to be able to raise um, food for their families. The water situations are horrible. You know, there isn't, uh, they walk for sometimes two days to bring enough water back for their family and for their small gardens. And they don't, their soils, they don't know anything about their soils. Why isn't it growing this wheat? Why isn't it doing this? Um, if they are able to have any animal agriculture over there at all, there's a lot of disease. They need people to help them with learning how to inoculate those against diseases, and they need um, prevention help as well. And so that's kind of it in a nutshell that we're that we're trying to put together. Right here, we believe that uh, global food hunger <laughs> starts right here in our own home state of Minnesota. So I was able to get the Minnesota Agri Women to help, and in each of our divisions in the state, we have districts, we uh, raised funds to give to our local food bank. Mm -hmm. So right here in our area, um, we gave to the Detroit Lakes Food Bank, mm -hmm. and we also gave to the Dorothy Day. Just a little south, they gave to the Battle Lake um, Food Pantry, and up north, those women up there in that very northern corner, they, they gathered a bunch of money to donate to theirs. We also had another uh, Pass the Hat session that gathered quite a bit of money down at the Arboretum when we had our Women's Ag Leadership Conference down there this spring. And so, you know, we're really excited about this program, and I can tell you a little bit more about 
why it is so special to me. Right. <laughs> right. We'll stop right there. You're a pro, <laughs> Carolyn. We're going to be back with more with Carolyn Zern after this. Welcome back to Hometown Happenings. I'm Carol McCarthy here today with Carolyn Zern, and she is talking about her work on the farm team. Uh, she's been traveling to Washington, D.C., talking about global food security, and, uh, you know, you were talking about your work even in the community. Um, so, Carolyn, tell us a little bit about, you know, why this is so important. I mean, um, farmers can, you know, go any way they want to. I mean, you know, kind of put their heads down and just focus on their getting their crops in and you know focus on farming and you've kind of taken it to a new level uh, where you're opening it up to global um, the, the global market yes well two things got me very interested and that was the fact that the women and children really need the nutrition in those other other countries also I'm always an advocate for women in agriculture as you, pr you guys probably know and a lot of the boards that I'm on, we, we go out and we're actually striving to find women uh, with the, um, well, they, they want to be on something that supports agriculture. They feel the need just like we do. They're, they're advocates of agriculture. And so one of the boards that I was on uh, just now, as I turned out, was the Northern Crops Institute board. And the Northern Crops is just that. It um, is paid for, is supported by Montana, Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota, and we provide coursework that actually then provide instruction and education about the northern crops that we grow because they are so unique. So some of the coursework that we did uh, was from like Africa where the people would come and learn how to use our soy flour. That sounds like there isn't much to it, but there's more than you think. Mm -hmm. And with the soy flour comes protein. So we, they would send the people from the institutions in those countries, like the schools and the bakeries, and they would learn how to implement the soy into their breads so the children would be getting their protein that way. Otherwise, besides starving to death, literally feeling like it, their nutrition value is nothing. And so as this happens, as, as those people learn to, to use these foods, and then provide for themselves comes the middle class and it starts growing. The middle class demands meat, it demands better food, it demands what we have and they become one of the better markets for us mm -hmm. because those people see that they need the protein, they see that they need what the United States can offer and the whole thing in a nutshell is, is that global food security actually is part of US security. And U.S. security also comes with our military. Our military now is being, which it always has been, I don't get this now we have a new program, because we've always had civil engineering. 40% of our military has always been farmers. However, now with this new program, they're actually training troops in agriculture so that they can go over and help these people get the water supply they need first, plant their plants, they'll, they'll be instructed on soil types, They'll be instructed on, on every type of mineral and crop protectant they need and helping with the animal agriculture. Okay, so you're literally planting seeds here in our community and planting seeds in the world figuratively. Yes, <laughs> right. yes. Um, so some very good work. So uh, now, are you, what, what are your plans for the near future? Well, okay, so right now, the Global Food Security Act is not completely passed. Mm -hmm. It came through the House and the Senate both in April. Now they have to decide how they're going to mesh that, and we're hoping that it's an easy, an easy fix. Uh, if, and ho we're hoping that it'll be soon because then they can lay it on the president's desk and he can sign it mm -hmm. and put it into motion. After that, what's next is making sure that all of the plans, all of the uh, programs that we have are transparent and do their job. Well, and we'll have to have you back as this <laughs> progresses because it's, <laughs> in a nutshell, you gave us the nutshell version. We'll I have to know. have it unfold some more. <laughs> so, Carolyn's turn. <laughs> Thank you Sorry. so much for Hometown Happenings. I'm Carol oh. McCarthy.